Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 18th of March. I hope you all had a great trading week last week and um, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and my videos on my YouTube channel uh, if you find the content uh, useful uh, with your trading. So um, getting into um, the week ahead, and this is from tradingeconomics.com. So the culmination of the week will be the Federal Reserve meeting, which includes the FOMC's economic forecast and a so-called dot plot interest rate projections. Also in the US, indicators such as manufacturing and services PMIs will be under review. Internationally, attention will be directed towards interest rate decisions from Japan, the United Kingdom, Australia and Switzerland. So a lot going on this week, um, which again, I'll get into uh, during the video. Additionally, uh, inflation data from Canada, the UK and Japan will be in the spotlight. Markets will also analyse flash manufacturing and services PMIs from Australia, Japan, the Euro area and the United Kingdom. And in China, updates on industrial production, retail sales and unemployment rate will be crucial. So lots going on this week um, for sure. So let's see if we can get some movement. So before we get into the um, uh, the analysis, the fundamental technical analysis, just a bit of a trade update um, and uh, some trade analysis, I should say, on the pound dollar. So um, this was a trade that I entered this week uh, along with the pound CAD, but both were pretty much uh, similar, if not the same uh, stop hunt setup. And I don't, I don't really talk about stop hunts on this uh on this channel uh, too much is more about supply and demand um, but um, sub, uh, stop hunts have their place um, with supply and demand but uh, that's beyond the scope of this video but for those of you uh, who just want to know uh, what trades I've uh, I've entered um, this was a trade setup that I had uh, pointed out on the uh, in our private members discord group and this was on the 11th which was on the I think it was the Monday yes the Monday morning so I said hi everyone I noticed that the pound cad uh, had uh, is at highs and has met the conditions for a stop hunt uh, with both the cad and the pound indexes indicating expensive cheap levels although it's not on my fundamental analysis spreadsheet uh, as a sell, I think there could be a short opportunity at this level, which is dependent upon the UK data this week. So I was looking really for, um, I'm actually a buyer of the, the, the pound overall, but what I was looking for is that there was a potential short and it was based off of a week uh, some weak um, pound data. So if that came in, there would have been a reason to sell in the short term. And that's what I was kind of looking for. If inflation measures like wages come in lower and labour shows contraction in the economy, I think the pound is likely to devalue from here as the market may start to price in rate cuts sooner from the BOE, the Bank of England. So uh, I posted this as well as um, the uh, the the. Uh, pound dollar um, setup and I basically just said the same can also be applied to GU uh, inflation for the dollar will need to come in sticky or higher than forecast as well as the pound data indicating inflation is lower than forecast uh, to go for a short and so um, that was really the the setup and uh, one of the uh, traders in the group also uh, kind of highlighted the stop punt here and so he just said he was looking at uh, this stop punt on the time frame daily which is basically the same kind of uh, um, uh, setup that I was looking for as well as a supply zone in there and um, yeah he had highlighted the level uh, that we were looking at in terms of or he was looking at as well in terms of a stop punt and so um so this week, pretty much before the news came out, before the uh, the uh, the data, the unemployment rates and the uh, inflation data for the dollar um, came out, the stop hunt uh, basically triggered on a daily time frame chart, and so uh, the entry was pretty much at the close of the day, and um, and so yeah, that was pretty much what we saw now. 
as prices uh, and, and the data came out, we actually got some decent news in terms of unemployment. So unemployment went a bit higher, which again, the next day, which basically pushed prices to the downside. And also as well, we had CPI data uh, come in, which was actually uh, stubborn as well. So it was higher than uh, forecast. And so it really kind of um, delayed, I guess, uh, the... Um, the Fed in in hiking or potentially was going to delay the Fed in sorry cutting rates not hiking rates in cutting rates, and so you saw a bit of a sell off and then a bit of a pullback. Now um, the next day we did have some GDP data uh, come out for the uh, for the pound, and actually I was expecting that hopeful even though it's forecasted at 0.2 percent I was hoping that this would come out a bit lower or even uh, much lower. Um, than the forecast. And I think had that had come out lower than forecast, I think we'd be a lot lower. So, and, but as it came out as expected, um, I wasn't too confident that this would kind of roll over as much as I kind of wanted it to. So what I did was I ended up taking um, a, uh, a bit of a small profit off of this trade. It was somewhere around the 12780s or something like that, somewhere around here. Um, so it was like a small profit on the um, on the uh, pound uh, dollar as well as the pound CAD. So the pound CAD um, was pretty much nearly a quite a very small profit, nearly a break even trade, um, a very small profit and a small profit on the pound uh, dollar. So um, but we did have actually on the, the Thursday um, PPI data came out double the forecast. So that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, prices did actually, again, continue to uh, fall. But um, at the time, I uh, thought it was the, the correct thing uh, to come out of the trade because of the fact that the uh, the pound might have been a bit stubborn against the dollar. And um, and yeah, but so a really small profit this, uh, we'll say, last week. And, um, and yeah, that was really the trade now. Um, am I going to, you know, am I, do I regret getting in um, or taking profit on this uh, too early? Um, my answer is no. And again, the reason being is because this wasn't actually really a trade that I had kind of um, wanted to get in. I was really only trying to get in short uh, and, and trade it down to a certain level, um, maybe get a one to one, 1 1.2 to one based on the pound uh, weakening and pound data. But the pound data, the GDP month for month, didn't really kind of support the, the narrative of the sell-off. So I needed just a bit more evidence for prices to kind of really sell off, um, which it didn't. And so um, that's the reason why I came out of the trade. Had that uh, the GDP had come in lower than forecast, and I would have stayed in and then uh, lightly held on and then we probably would have had the uh, uh, PPI come out and uh, it probably would have been a lot lower where we are than we are right now. But um, but yeah, ultimately, um, you know, the next best trade after a, a, a winning trade is a basically a break even trade. Right. And I got a small win off that. So um, and the uh, the pounds CAD. So it wasn't necessarily a bad week. It was just, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the trade didn't necessarily work out as, as uh, in terms of fundamentals as I wanted it to. But um, I am actually actually still long on the pound and that's my bias for now until obviously um this week where we've definitely got some uh, some major um uh, news coming out right in terms of you know the bank of england announcements as well as uh, i think there's something else or some other things going on uh, interest rate decision as well as retail sales and what else was that we've got uh, inflation rate i thought it was inflation was this week as well so um we'll see what happens and if inflation does come out lower matter of fact then actually this should want to uh, fall away so let's see what happens but um but yeah that was basically the trade the pound uh dollar and also as well an update on the new zealand dollar from last week uh i have been stopped out of the final position which uh, was a profitable trade um on that final position so yeah uh that was decent and then we've obviously had the uh us dollar um uh, strengthens so yeah that was that's basically what's happened on that one so i'm flat or i'm out on that 
on that New Zealand dollar trade. And you can watch the uh, the entries and the breakdowns from uh, last week and the week before um, on the Sunday videos. So getting into the uh, the actual analysis and starting off on the dollar index. And the dollar index is an equally weighted dollar index for those who are new to the channel. And if you uh, uh, want to know why I use the, an equally weighted index and uh, how to uh, apply it to your trading view charts, I'll put the link in the description box below or up in the top right hand side of the screen. So you click on that and it will take you to the video. So um, again, this, uh, this week dollar came down or end of last week dollar came down. And uh, this week we've had again inflation numbers come out uh, hotter than expected, right? And so uh, core inflation tops forecast again reinforcing Fed caution. And so the longer um, inflation takes to reach the central bank's 2% target is the longer they're going to hold. And a hold really um, is supportive of a currency um, because if you're cutting rates, then that is uh, the effect of cutting rates is actually to devalue the currency or depreciate the currency. And so um, when central banks, um, you know, can't achieve or not, or are not achieving their 2% target, then they have to hold rates in order and hope that rates uh, do get inflation or higher rates get inflation down before cutting. So we had core inflation come out, uh, which was um, supportive of a hold. And also as well, US uh, PPI, producer prices index jump according to signs of persisting inflation, right? So um measures of inflation are uh, not reaching the central banks the fed's two percent target and so you're starting to see if you go to the cme fed watch tool and especially uh the expectation is for a june uh cut uh, if you go down and you'll see now it's actually no changes 41.2 percent now if you look back on the uh, the daily and the weekly and the monthly, a month ago, around the 16th of February, there was a 24% chance of a hold, right? And then a week ago, it was 26, 26% and now it's 41.2%, uh, uh, which is now appreciating uh, the, the uh, currency. And as the market prices out, it's starting to price out rate cuts in June. And so that's why you're seeing... Uh, the dollar, right, starts to appreciate. So it's all driven fundamentals. This is not, you know, some Elliott Wave um, nonsense or anything like that. It's fundamentals that are driving uh, prices um, over the medium to long term, right? And so uh, for me, I was, um, I, w I did get short on this last week, but this week, in uh, uh, as as inflation has proved stubborn, I am waiting now for at least a decent pullback on the dollar to look for some long trades. That's really my bias on the dollar uh, back to being um, long. Not to say I was, I was just only short. I was saying uh, that you can look for long uh, reasons to buy and sell the dollar. I thought last week the data came out, didn't support it, and that was correct. Um, and this week and into the you know, foreseeable future, as long as inflation remains stubborn and uh, won't go down to their 2% target, then um, you should have a, uh, a stronger dollar, a more appreciative dollar as um, as the Fed are likely to remain on hold for a bit longer. So that's my uh, uh, my dollar analysis. And you're seeing that play out on the dollar yen. So the dollar yen, um, uh, the yen actually is, is, is expected to cut rates. I mean, sorry, to hike rates. Um, uh, this week, so the Bank of Japan to lift short term rates to 0.1% range on Tuesday, says Kyodo. So uh, the Bank of Japan is set to raise its key rates for the first time in 17 years on Tuesday following its two day monetary policy meeting, Kyodo reported. So um, uh, with that, the expectation is for the yen to appreciate, right? And the yen appreciating would mean the dollar yen to go to the downside. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if in the short term, because there's been such a buildup of uh, shorts that we get some sort of, um, um, you know, uh, a short squeeze where prices just squeeze everybody out, massive liquidity hunt, and then prices go to the downside. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me, but ultimately, they are a central bank if they do hike, uh, and they're their only central bank to really start hiking rates. 
And so with that being said, um, you know, the, the path of least resistance should continue to be the, to the downside. But that also does depend upon whether the, uh, the Federal Reserve do start to um, um, cut rates sooner. And I think I still think the, uh, the dollar yen is going to be a trade uh, of 2024 in terms of downside potential. But the, the, the really the risk factor to that is stubborn inflation. If inflation goes, you know, moves to the downside to their two percent target, then I think we definitely see one forties, one thirty fives is what the banks are forecasting. So let's see what happens this week. Of course, there is a risk, in fact, that the uh, the Bank of Japan don't uh, uh, hike rates. And if they don't hike rates, then I would probably see, you, you know, you're likely to see prices actually uh, go probably maybe above that 152s who knows but um we're definitely going to get a revaluation of the yen because i think um the market is is heavily expecting the bank of japan to um to uh to to high crates and um and if they don't then i think again the the, the yen has to be revalued in the short term but overall uh if they don't hike hike in march then the next time and the next uh, meeting they've got in April, that should be really where um, or when the bank should want a high rate. So although you might see a massive move to the upside on a surprise uh, hold for the Bank of Japan, I do think that it might be a bit short lived or it might last for maybe a week or so or two until the dust settles. And then all of a sudden, you know, the uh, um, the euphoria of that price movement will probably fade as then the market starts to price in in April. Uh, hikes. So let's see what happens there. But if you are looking at uh, uh, shorts, then you're looking at anywhere around here or even a fresher area of supply there. Or if you're looking for buys on the dollar, then you're looking for a price to come all the way back and then um, around there. Looking at the, in fact, let me just move that up slightly as the demand down, zone starts there. Pound CAD. Um, prices did come down again to this area of demand and uh, I also put a level of support there as well which it did bounce off of this week and of course stubborn inflation for the dollar um, being the narrative so you see basically a bounce from there um, so at the moment if you are looking for a dollar buy a US dollar buy a pullback into that zone or even lower would be quite nice or you're looking for uh, if you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar based off of some decent news, then you're looking for maybe a stop hunt above that level. I would say that's quite a nice level to look for a stop hunt. If it happens and you think that the Canadian dollar is a bargain against the US dollar, which um, I can't see at the moment uh, any evidence suggesting that that is the case. There are some supply zones and daily supply zones in and around this area here, here and here. Here. so let's see what happens but uh yeah uh, that's where we are with the dollar cad i think part of the resistance should be more to the upside uh pound dollar again spoke about this from a stop hunt perspective um but from a uh, fundamental perspective again britain's red hot jobs market cools slightly with rise in unemployment so wages cool as well vacancies drop and redundancies increase so figures add to confidence that inflationary forces are cooling so uh, that was uh, the data that kind of pushed uh, the pound uh, initially you know uh, the next day to the downside and again um, what kind of held it up a bit was in fact the uh, the economy uh, uk economy returns to growth of after volatile fourth quarter so a rebound in retail activity helped the uk economy bounced back in january and the combination of falling gas prices and anticipation of rate cuts suggest we should see an improvement in growth through 2024 so there was some positive news uh for the pounds oh, sorry about that and um and so yeah i think the pound against the dollar is likely to probably um you know stay around this between the highs of the 129s and possibly the one two sixes that could probably be the new uh likely to be the new auction or the new range right around here as you've got two decent currencies and uh, um looking to obviously uh high crates later but um i think the pound should still have the edge overall as they are looking to um uh cut rates later now there is some um uh, I guess speculation on UK inflation 
expectations and they fall to the lowest since the Bank of England hikes began. So a survey suggests the Bank of England is keeping price expectations anchored and findings come as Conservative MPs urge end of Bank of England independence. So um, inflation is expected to fall uh, this week. And if it does actually fall uh, more than expected, so it says here inflation, um, yeah, forecast is actually uh, for it to be to come in lower. So in fact, if that does happen, that could actually still see the uh, the pound sell off. Now, would I trade the pound dollar? No, I'm looking for something like uh, uh, maybe like the pound, um, something like the, um, what would I be looking for? The pound, pound Aussie would be something that I'd be looking at uh, this week. Um, but the pound should probably sell off across the board. But I think the pound Aussie... Uh, should be decent for a uh, for a trade. Anyways, let's. Uh, I'm not going to look at that and technically, but um, uh, in this video anyway. But um, I'll look at that overall with the uh, with the members in the group. Anyways, um, but the pound should sell off overall. So any pullbacks, if you are looking at uh, sell trades on the pound, then you're looking for a pullback into a zone like that or even higher before looking at getting um, short. So. Uh, there you are. If you are looking for long trades, though, on this pound dollar, you have to wait for prices to come back down into that demand zone and then look for some long trades there. Uh, pound yen. So again, with the yen um, looking like a, uh, a potential rate hike, if they do hike, then what should happen is a move to the downside. If they don't hike, you're likely to see prices maybe even break through that. But as I said before, I don't think it would be... Um, long lived it should be short lived um in terms of price movement moving higher um and uh but let's see if you are looking to buy the uh the uh the pounds then you're looking for pullbacks into that zone and then looking for long trades there if you're looking for buyers on the yen um hopefully prices come up into that area there and then look for a short trade but even if you know after the release of the uh, news if you're up um, on the in the announcement of the Bank of Japan, regardless of whether it's in a uh, supply zone or not, you can look for probably short trades. But just be very very wary of um, because it is a high volatile event. Uh, personally, I'd look for the dust to settle. Right, so if they high rates right to zero, and you start to see prices continue to rise, not just on the uh, on the pound yen, but you see the the yen basically weaken. Uh, I think it's going to be a liquidity hunt, a bit of a short squeeze on um, anyone who is uh, trying to go short. You know, a lot of retail traders, even, you know, the guys watching this, you guys watching this are likely to just blindly press sell on the news and then your stop losses are fuel. And then what will happen is that you all get stopped out. And then eventually what will happen is the big money will just buy at a cheaper price. And then, you know, the next day, next week, um, next month, you'll start to see prices uh, go to the downside, right? Remember, they don't have to trade today. They can, you know, wait for a better price before prices go lower. So I would say just um, be, a well, my advice, you don't have to take it. And it's not financial, of course. You do what you want with your money. But ultimately, if you do see prices go the other way on a rate hike, um, then, um, you know, just know that it's uh, it's likely to be a stop hunt in some way, shape or form. And I do think that it would eventually roll over. It's just uh, taking out a lot of the stop um, stop losses before it does do that. So um, so that's where we are with the pound, yen, uh, euro, dollar. So euro, dollar, nice trade here from last week and a bit of a reversal. Um, I'm more bearish on the euro. Uh, and so any pullbacks... Uh, up into that area there would be quite nice for a short trade. There is actually still supply here as well. So you can use that as a, a level to look to uh, short if you want. Um, if you are looking to buy the euro, uh, then you're looking at uh, demand zones there. Now, the, last week, uh, it, the news was a bit light on, um, you know, the thinking of the ECB on interest rates. So ECB's rain sees prerequisites pre um, for several rate cuts this year. And um, yeah, it's there are uh, some hawkish and dovish um, 
uh, members. And so just because one member comes out and says that he thinks that there should be rate cuts, um, some, you know, uh, members might just turn around and say, well, I don't think, that, you know, they should be cutting this year. So um, the expectation really overall for the euro is to is to kind of cut in June. I don't think that's changed much. So um, as if the if the, uh, the Federal Reserve hold for longer than the euro, then you're likely to see this happen, right? You're likely to see prices continue to fall all the way back down to 107s and even one of the 105s, right? So um, let's see what happens there. If you see inflation for the euro come down, then that's going to definitely drop the euro. And I say definitely, I don't like to use absolutes, but that should and is likely to drop the euro. So let's see what happens with that. Um, euro yen, again, my bias is to go short on this. So uh, overall, you've got one central bank that is hiking rates or looking to hike rates, one that is cutting rates. So any pullbacks up into this zone here are going to be, for me, uh, selling opportunities or even higher. Just my bias is just to sell um, uh, and when I see an entry or set up. So any pullbacks up into here, looking for a specific entry on a lower time frame, and then I'm looking for short trades. But as providing, obviously, the uh, Bank of Japan do high rates. If they don't high rates, then I'm not going to stand in front of that. I'm just going to wait for the dust to settle and then I'll still look for short trades, but it would be a lot higher up potentially. Again, a bit of a stop hunt above that area if it does uh, show its uh, uh, its hand. And so uh, we do have some demand zones though. If you do want to get long on this, there's a demand zone there and there's also a demand zone right here. So there we are. Demand, so you're looking for a pullback into any of the demand zones if you're looking for long trades on the euro. Uh, euro pound, I would expect the pound to continue to strengthen, although this week we have, we did get a bit of a pullback. I was saying in last week's video that I did like this technical setup here. Very, very nice and it actually worked out. This was known as a CPR zone on the uh, euro. It's just fundamentally, I didn't like buying the euro against the, uh, the pound, although the pound was obviously a bit weak. But I do think any moves to the upside um, further higher, I think anything around there is going to be really nice for a sell for the British pound. Um, but uh, let's see if we can get up there. And also it does depend upon, upon what happens this week. So um, if inflation does come out lower than expected, then in fact the euro might be actually a buy against the British pound, at least in the short term, as... Um, maybe expectations for the pound, um, sorry, cuts uh, start to be pushed uh, or, or pulled forward uh, towards from, you know, something like August to maybe July. And you might see, in fact, uh, the, the, the pound weaken. But overall, as long as the expectation for the pound to cut is later than the euro, then any pullback should be seen as uh, shorting opportunities. And then you've got the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar again this week. Uh, we did get a move uh, higher, nice and very nice stop hunt above uh, the zone, um, that level there. So we see a level. It wasn't really a pair I was looking to trade, but you can see where that stop hunt is very nice. And then uh, you had the move and the, the, the news kind of confirm um, that the dollar uh, was indeed appreciating so uh, this now creates a new uh, demand zone sorry it's a new supply zone right there and again if you are looking for short trades on the Aussie dollar then I think I move back up to the here is quite nice if you're looking for long trades and buying the Australian dollar against the US dollar then I think I move back down into that demand zone um, and even down into the 63s, just beyond the 64s, is quite nice for a buy. Um, I am long Australian dollars overall, but just not against the US dollar. And finally, gold. So gold, again, the strength of the US dollar capping the upside. And if you see, obviously, this move, um, it's a massive move to the upside. That's pretty much, you know, um, uh, the move has happened now, so I think you know we should see prices start to pull back, especially um, with the dollar um, strengthening. So uh, with that, if you do see prices move to the downside, then they move back up. Should be a decent short if you're looking for short trades. If you are looking for long trades, then you're actually looking for something where you see um, prices make 
a new high, then a pullback into a demand zone, and then looking for a long trade there. So that's the kind of movement you would need to see. So um, gold at the moment, definitely very in, in a very expensive area for my liking. Uh, I do you know want to be a, a, a buyer of gold, but um, yeah, I wouldn't be buying up at these expensive areas. And so, um, yeah, that brings us to the end of the video for this week. And um, yeah, for those of you who are in the um, the private members group, um, I have posted the uh, private members uh, fundamental and technical analysis video for the week. So please watch that as that goes into way more depth than um, what I've done in this video in the YouTube videos. And, um, and also as well, if you are interested in joining uh, Trading 180 and getting access to my fundamental analysis spreadsheet, um, the uh, joining is going to be, or the enrollment is going to open at the end of this month. I haven't decided on a specific date just yet, but it's going to be at the end of this month, uh, beginning of April. So um, I will uh, notify you guys via email um, if you've uh, contacted me as to the specific date over the next day or two. So um, if you do want to know a bit more about the, how the uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet works and the currency value cycle as well, um, I have a video, actually, this was recorded uh, a year ago, um, and I kind of break down, it's about 50 minutes long, and I break down really the uh, the uh, uh, Trading 180 fundamental analysis spreadsheet with the currency value cycle explained, and it's really important that you understand this, and um, I don't think there's anybody um, who's broken down the currency value cycle, um, you know, on YouTube um, and really understands it in a way that we do to this high, very high level. So, um, yeah, you can watch that video to get a bit of a um, understanding on exactly how uh, to trade fundamentals and understand how the currency value cycle works. Anyways, guys, um, hope you have a great trading week. And uh, until the next video, all the best.